This is a brief introduction of what is SAR and RF exposure. The two US government agencies involved in the radio frequency safety matters, the FCC and the FDA. The Federal Communications Commission, FCC, is an independent US government agency overseen by Congress, while the Food and Drug Administration is an agency within the US Department of Health and Human Services. And for decades, FCC's worked closely with FDA to figure out and adopt limits for safe levels of everyday exposure to radio frequency energy. And if you remember from 12th grade physics, waves are part of everyday life. Sound waves exist because of physical vibrations and they're heard and felt by our ears. And those exist between 100 hertz and 20 kilohertz. And cell phones operate typically 700 megahertz, 40 gigahertz range. Your microwave oven is typically operating 2500 megahertz. And visible light from the sun is a wave emitting even higher frequencies in hundreds of terahertz range, which includes ultraviolet light. And once you get up beyond visible light frequencies, those waves have enough energy to potentially impact atoms and molecules. And those kinds of waves at those high frequencies is known to be what's called ionizing energy. This basically means enough energy to break down the bonds between atoms and molecules. So what is non-ionizing energy? Non-ionizing energy involves waves below visible light and do not break down chemical bonds within cells and tissues, but can cause tissue heating or nerve stimulation. And this is where cell phones, microwaves, wireless charging, and other popular consumer products exist. Now, no need to worry because everything out in the market with an FCC ID has been tested by an accredited test laboratory to ensure it meets the federal limits. Otherwise, it won't be allowed to be certified or imported or marketed in the United States. Okay, so the term for the levels absorbed by our bodies by these non-ionizing waves is called specific absorption rate, or SAR, or SAR. A lot of questions we wonder about cell phones is, is my cell phone safe? The answer is yes. If devices are brought from recognized online distributors or in brick and mortar stores, then most likely they're FCC certified, which means they've been mass produced with the designs that were submitted to the government to be shown as compliant to the safety standards. Many companies even published their SAR levels to show that they indeed comply with the FCC limit of 1.6 watts per kilogram. In fact, this limit is ultra conservative with over 50 times safety margins. So you can feel good that even if you use your phone or tablet or watch in a worst case scenario, like on a farm far away from a cell tower, your phone's at max power trying to reach the cell tower, you're well below the levels that can potentially cause harm. And the last thing is what the government distinguishes between what is called a portable device and a mobile device. To the everyday person, they mean the same thing, but for manufacturers and certification bodies and test labs, they're completely different things. A portable product means something that's reasonable and foreseeable to be used within 20 centimeters of a person's body, head, or hand. While a mobile product is something not typically carried portably by a person. For example, a Wi-Fi router at home, a smart printer, or a smart laundry machine. Both kinds of products need certification but only one of these types needs SAR evaluation, SAR testing to give the public assurance the radiation levels from these technologies at their worst case scenarios be below the federal limits. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit subscribe, follow me on LinkedIn or YouTube to keep getting all you need to know about RF safety and all things technology compliance.